Hey everybody, thanks for joining me again on my channel. Welcome back down to the lair. I hope you're all staying uh, safe and healthy out there. So not a whole lot of flying going on. Weather is terrible. Got to actually get out to our local field, very rural, so it's still open, unlike a lot of fields that are out there right now. But got to do some night flying on Friday. We'll talk about that adventure in a minute. But I've had some requests to show you guys how I did my routing and wiring and lighting and stuff like that in the Horizon Hobby um, Hangar 9 X Cub. So I want to go over that with you really quick. I want to throw a shout out to somebody that helps me with some of these projects and making the things that I need. And um, I'll include the link down when we get there. So let's get into this and get started. So when we look at the X Cub, a lot of the wiring and stuff that needs to get done uh, is all underneath. So I went with the, as I do in most of my uh, planes, a Spectrum. This is the uh, AR 12310T uh, power safe receiver. So it uses EC3 connectors, dual batteries. And the way I route this so you guys can hopefully see this is um, I just put in two little blocks of wood there and I attach the res uh, power safe receiver to it. So that way I'm not putting the screws up through the floor of the plane and into the cabin area. The receivers I mounted a 90 degree. So one I just put in a little tube and glued that in there. The other one I put going the opposite direction in a small piece of tape. I use, um, it's almost like an automotive conduit that uh, I run through all my channels and I put my wiring into. This isn't super pretty under here. I didn't spend a, a lot of time with it. This stuff you could pick up at a local Lowe's or a Home Depot. Um, but basically I have a couple holes here in the floor that I utilize running the wires to from up top down through. And then this tunnel here will feed from the batteries up under the main seat flooring that comes back. So you have to remove this panel, this one right here in order to hook this stuff up. You can't leave these hooked up because this thing has a draw on it at all times. So it'll run your batteries dead if you let it sit for long periods. So these always have to be unplugged and there is a temporary um, non-fail switch mounted up top. So everything comes through channels and other conduit, the stuff you could pick up at Lowe's or Home Depot like I did. You can run that through. I got some bigger stuff here for the wiring that runs up to the front. Um, so that's kind of what's going on there. And again, just because I trust nothing, I go ahead and I glue, uh, just tack some hot glue on the top to keep those connectors from coming loose. So I never have that issue to worry about. So um, when it comes to what we have going on up here, hopefully you guys can, I'll throw my light in here so we can kind of see what's going on. So um, the wirings that I run on the inside, number one for my lighting, I got a cheap lighting module off of eBay. It comes with wires, the right connectors. So you just have to do some cutting and splicing. Um, for some other things, but they have different patterns. So if you want ones that blink or strobe or whatever that module works for that So there is one all the way in the tail um, One of the rudder lights that you have to run all the way up that thing runs into this box because it blinks um, And then I also ran another light up through the side up in here, which was kind of an afterthought and I made a little light for this guy right up top for inside the cabin and then I have, if you can see, that little LED there, which is for my optical cut switch for my engine to let me know when it's armed. So what I did here is the lighting that needs to blink um, or is inside, I ran off this module. Again, eight bucks. The rest of the lighting that's going to run in the wings is actually through this main harness. And I get these connectors. Um, a gentleman by the name of Donnie Nevis, he makes these for me. Uh, I just give them the specs of what I want. So I literally measured from here into the conduit. And this conduit is just kind of hidden in there. I like the black color. It's hot glued all the way down the inside and it runs through the floor. So all that wiring is somewhat protected going down in here. Um, all of the servos feed the wiring into there and go down through the floor. And then I also have two satellites, one here, one there, and one in the back, all at different heights and different angles. And all of this wiring that's kind of left here is really covered up by the seat. So when we take the seat and we position the seat in here, the seat sits all the way back and you can't actually see any of that stuff behind it either. And what's left is, is fairly hidden. 
So why do I like those big bulk connectors? Um, really just no chance of hooking anything up backwards, ailerons, flaps, and missing it and causing a crash. So um, this is all one solid piece. And all I did was measure what I need to go all the way down. So one set is aileron, one set is flaps, and the other one is the light. So the wing lights, I actually run through this conduit and they go down into the power safe receiver underneath. So here on the other side, get my flashlight back in here. You guys can see I did the same thing there. I run up behind the pillar down through the floor right in there. So most of the stuff is hidden. The switches... You can see the power safe uh, no fail switch is right there on the floor and then up here I have the wiring for the pilot's head that has to run to a Y harness for the rudder So that thing runs through the floor down into There into my battery conduit and then under and then these two leads I tuck in the side These are just extensions for the switches So really the only thing from the whole outside of the plane is my fuel dot I don't have any other switches or anything else mounted out here So all that stuff then as you can see again comes through the floor here and here and over and all of those things uh, For the satellite. So that's kind of the deal there. So again, Donnie Nevis he makes those for me. I give him the measurements. I actually wanted to go to Toledo this year and get the tools to learn how to make extensions and those types of connectors. Unfortunately, Toledo got canceled, so we're not going to be able to do that. Here is the other benefit to it. Let me show you the wing. So when we start to look down at um, the wing, I took it out of the bag for you guys. Here is the other connector. Now I know that they make other connectors and it, whether it's a multiplex or other things, everybody likes their own style. That's cool. Um, these are a very positive lock. I don't have to worry that they're in there, but basically I had to make me two leads that are literally an inch long. And then the other one I believe was 24 inches. So this one, um, these two run to the flap servo and then, um, to the lighting that runs all the way up in there. I have just a short connector on the inside that I put right to that thing. So um, the aileron, all right, is from here and that extension is only 12 inches total. So I got, or nine inches maybe it was, I got a 20, I got him to make me one lead from here that was 24 inches long to hook right to here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm minimizing the amount of connections that's in here. So yes, I have one there two here and then the last one is in the power safe receiver so the least amount of connections the better off you are and to me the less chance of screwing up the plugging wrong connectors in together the other plane that i use some of his connectors for and if you've seen it ama actually did an article in the ama magazine on the the carbon z the t28 trojan the mess of wires that comes through the wing there is disastrous. So he actually made me another one that I, I requested and I use that there to clean up uh, all of those connections in the carbon cub as well. And again, no chance of now hooking things up and having a fail from just being simple minded that day at the field. So that's kind of uh, what's going on here with the wiring for the X cub. I hope that helps. Donnie Nevis hit him up. I'm going to include down below his link. Um, so that way you guys know how to get a hold of him. I'm going to uh, put his email down in there for you guys. So please hit him up, have him make you some connectors. They've worked fabulous for me. I've had zero issues with it. The guy's super awesome to deal with. And the other thing I want to show you is my night radian. So this night radian is, is quite the, the plane. So Friday night I'm out flying with my buddy Dave and I actually have my night radian set up. So I can, if you haven't gotten into night flying, you got to do it. I got, I got my friend, my, my flying buddy, Dave, he got me hooked on this stuff and night flying is really cool. The night radian has to be from flight test horizon hobbies has to be one of the coolest planes to use so many color patterns. But what I didn't like was you always had to change the colors on the ground. Well, there was a gentleman from Canada who makes an electronic switch that you can actually do it from your radio, toggle through the speeds and the patterns. So we're out flying around and I'm toggling through the patterns. And while one of the downfalls is if you hold the switch for two seconds, which obviously I did, uh, it shuts the lights off. So all of a sudden it's completely dark out and your plane just goes bloop and disappears. Well, needless to say, we have a lot of trees and I'm like, oh my God, there's going to wind up in the trees and I'm never going to get the thing back. So I just held in the elevator to make it keep looping, trying to mess with the switch. And then I heard it into the ground. So uh, let me, let me show you what happened here. So anyway, 
Um, if you haven't seen my method before of using the steam, the steamer, you guys can actually see. Uh, I broke the nose off right here. It cracked it right there, right there, and back on the other side right there. Guys, it, it, I pushed all that foam out with the steam, steam cleaner. You can barely even tell. Um, I cleaned up the nose. None of this stuff broke, and all this stuff was misshaped. The only thing that I had, even though this thing straightened back out, was it was still, the foam was kind of weak from being so compacted. So I just hollowed out a channel and put a carbon rod in there, which I always had to add some nose weight to this thing anyway. So now I don't actually need lead in the nose. I have this thing, but this is the... Um, electronic switch that you wire into there um it's actually hidden here if i can get my velcro out of the way these things are relatively cheap you can find them um all over the place but uh this is the electronic switch wired into this old old board so super cool setup i like being able to change the color patterns and the speed uh while i'm flying up in the air so anyway um so that's all i got for you guys uh really we're just kind of waiting on some nice weather waiting for the corona stuff to clear up again stay safe stay healthy uh, i appreciate you guys taking a couple minutes here to join me again if you like it like it subscribe dude we're up to like 325 members right now F for me that is awesome right so that i know that there's people out there with 10,000. um pilot ryan media watched uh and participated in one of their giveaways last night super cool dude great setup uh there's a lot of cool people out there rc informer tons and tons and tons of subscribers it takes time to get there i love sharing information with you guys just keep sharing the stuff if you like it like it comment down below if you have any questions share the stuff hit the bell notification icon so you know when i come out with new stuff uh, again i hope you like it stay safe stay healthy and uh, let's get back out there to the field and hopefully get flying take care guys peace out bonus clip you ready how we hang stuff from the ceiling so as long as the plane's not super heavy check this out all i use is hangers up above the hangers i use eyelets put the eyelets up there hook in the hanger slide the wings through so um, basically you leave one hanger in slide the wing in put the other hanger over the wing and then hook it up so if that helps you guys with some lighter planes go hang them up yeah that's what i use all right peace out